aloha from Mars uh, slash Hawaii. I'm actually on the volcano Mount Aloha on the big island of Hawaii. So even though it may look like Mars, we do research here like if we were on Mars, but actually we're on Earth. My name is Dr. Michaela Musulova. I'm an astrobiologist. That means I search for life in space, but I'm also an analog astronaut. That means I do work and research like an astronaut, but here on Earth to help prepare humans to be able to live on the Moon and Mars one day. I'm also the director of the High Seas Research Station, which is this interesting looking dome you see behind me. It is a research station here on the volcano Mauna Loa, where people spend sometimes several weeks up to a year uh, living as if they were on Mars. And you can see it really you know, looks like Mars around me. The geology here is very much like that of Mars and the moon. So we can do relevant research for the moon and Mars. The reason we have this research station here in Hawaii is not only because the terrain around us looks like Mars, but the geology is actually directly relevant to uh, Mars and the Moon. That means similar types of volcanic rocks can be found on both the Moon and Mars. So when we do research during our simulated Martian and lunar missions, we're actually doing something very similar to what astronauts will do one day on the Moon and Mars. And we also look for life forms in this environment in so-called lava caves, these caves made of lava. And we think similar life forms or organisms could live on Mars today in similar caves. So that's part of the research we do here. But the main part is to study how humans uh, interact and can survive in these difficult, isolated conditions as if we were on another planet. I have now led over 30 simulated missions to the Moon and Mars as a commander. It's been an amazing experience working with people from all around the world. I've learned a lot and the one, one main thing that I learned was that humans are going to be very important um, in terms of future space exploration. If we can't find good crews that can work together well under these extreme conditions uh, of space exploration and space missions, then we can't make those missions be successful. So let me show you what the inside of the high seas habitat is like next. We are inside the high seas habitat in the main room. Here's my desk of some of my work and colleagues behind me. And then just there behind me, you can see entrance to the airlock. And then if we kind of look around, this is what the inside of the habitat looks like. Uh, upstairs are bedrooms where we each have our little place to live, a little bit of privacy. Otherwise, we have to share this whole space with other people. Uh, while on one hand, we work at our desks, we then also exercise right behind us. And then just next door is the dining room table. So it's a very busy space where there's always something happening. inside high seas for weeks or months on end. It's all about being uh, an empathetic person who cares about others, can be patient with them, can communicate well with them so that we don't have arguments together. And so we can work well together to do research, outreach, and work on many other space related projects. My favorite part of my job in doing these analog space missions is to do the science. Here I am in our science laboratory. It's also the only other room that has a window in our whole habitat. You can see it behind me. The other window is in the main room. And here we get to do all sorts of research, including some biochemical I'm doing in collaboration with NASA to some geology research. You can see some rocks in a microscope over there to growing different types of plants for the crew to eat. And some of the plants are, for example, grown using human hair because we want to be recycling everything possible. 
uh, during our space mission. So that's also been a project we've been working on. And I generally just love working on these different projects, trying something new, making some new discoveries. But I must say the absolute best part of my job is getting to work with people all around the world on these amazing projects. One of the most important parts of space exploration and space missions that involve humans is food. We need to be able to have enough nutrients to sustain ourselves, but also, as many of you probably know, you know, if you're not eating food that you like, you become grumpy and then you don't want to be working, you don't want to be getting along well with others. So that's why being able to cook good food, but also having a good selection of food to cook with in the first place is so important. But because these are analog space missions, so simulated missions where we try and recreate what it would be like to be on the moon or Mars, really, we also have to cook and eat with uh, ingredients as uh, future missions to Mars will have, for example, and that's freeze-dried food. And the food looks kind of like this. So for example, this is beef. You can see it's basically kind of looks like dog food, <laughs> the chunks of brown stuff and you have to add water to it to make it be somewhat edible and for it to resemble a beef in some shape or form. And then for example, the, this is um, egg powder. From this we can make something similar to scrambled eggs but uh, doesn't always work that way if you don't have a good cook on the crew. And then over here, these are potato gems from which we can make mashed potatoes. So also, if you look at it, it looks kind of like these weird little granules, but when you add water to them, they actually start to look like mashed potatoes. They kind of taste that way too, but there's definitely a lot of room for improvement. That's why it's so important that we'll be able to grow our own fresh food during space missions, whether on the moon or Mars, because people will get very quickly tired of this freeze-dried astronaut food. Another very important part of space missions and everyday human life uh, are bathrooms. Here you can see our toilets. It's not, it kind of looks like a typical toilet, but it's actually not. You can see it's pretty tall compared to me because it's a compost toilet. Everything that you put inside here gets recycled by microbes. And in theory, we could use what the microbes leave behind uh, to grow food off of, like Mark Watney in The Martian. We haven't been trying that yet. We're a bit cautious on that end, but potentially in the future on Mars, we could do that. We also have a dry urinal. Uh, that's so that we don't put too much liquid into the toilet and drown those microbes because we need them to be happy and work well to decompose everything we put into the toilet. And then this is our shower. It's basically a bucket. We only take a shower every two weeks and basically we fill this bucket to only about a third and then we use the other container in there to scoop the water and pour it on our heads. So only once every two weeks you get this bucket shower because water is so precious on the moon and Mars or will be that way in the future and it definitely is during our simulated missions. Currently we are in between two uh, EVAs or, or spacewalks where we go outside into the terrain wearing spacesuits. Uh, we did one this morning to explore some crazy lava caves where we do astrobiology research, so looking at extreme life that lives on Earth and trying to see whether similar life could uh, live on Mars today or whether we could live in these lava caves on the moon one day. And in a little bit, we're going to do another spacewalk outside uh, to get some beautiful shots during sunset and to do some more research outside. Sometimes for days on end, waiting for some nice weather like today so we can go on EVA. We're also very dependent on weather because our, our, our electricity here comes from solar panels. So when the weather is bad, we have to go into low power mode and save as much electricity as we can to make it through the night. It can get really cold up here on the mountains, approximately 2,500 meters in altitude. 
So this is essentially where we kind of all live and work. We also have a lab, I will show you in a moment, where we can do some microbiology, geochemistry, and other kind of research. This lab also works as our medical bay. So if you have a look over here, we just enter the lab. Uh, right behind me over here, that's where I have some sampling tools so I can collect astrobiology samples for collaboration we have with NASA Goddard. And over here in this corner, uh, this is right behind me, that's the medical bay in case anyone gets hurt on mission or feels sick, we can take care of them. Um, and then we have all sorts of other equipment like a microscope, and tools here behind me next to the only other window we have in this whole habitat where we can grow some plants and again look outside our window and there you can see our solar panels right there which provide us with the needed electricity for us to survive here in this habitat. So we do all sorts of research here inside the habitat outside and finally let me show you where are the bathrooms and uh, our bedrooms. Our bedrooms are located on the top part of the habitat. So I'm walking up the stairs now to show you what our bedrooms look like. You can see six bedrooms behind me and the last door right there is an upstairs bathroom. You can see what it says on the bathroom over there. The time is now, so. All right. And yeah, so this space in the bedroom, essentially our only uh, private space we have in the habitat, unless we spend some time alone in the airlock engineering or lab. And we usually just come here to sleep, but sometimes, you know, you get tired of spending a lot of time with other people all the time. You can't escape them. So sometimes you just want to go to your bedroom and have some alone time. And during this mission with this crew, we actually get along really well. So we just tend to spend all our time together in that one main room with the computers and the exercise equipment. And yeah, we work together, we exercise together, cook together, uh, have a lot of laughs, share stories. And actually we've been having a very nice mission and it's always my goal as commander of a crew to make us go from being a group of strangers to become a space family. I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek into the life of an analog astronaut on a simulated mission to the Moon or Mars. I really love my job. I get to work with incredible people from all around the world who have now become my space family. We work on cool projects together, like the research I mentioned with NASA, but also uh, different types of outreach projects, art projects, and many others. We really hope to contribute with our work to helping humans be able to get to Mars in the next 20 years. Uh, fingers crossed. Um, so for now, aloha and uh, we, I send you my best wishes for Mars.